rain queen part one aimed to give context basically to the reason why rain and rain making has been of such importance to the african philosophy and african culture from since the beginning of our recorded history so today we're expanding on the one and only the rain queen mujaji she is a descendant of the karanga people and she's said to have fled her village and through her powers was able to build her own queendom. So she fled Zimbabwe with a few of her followers and settled in Venda, where she formed the Lubedu or Balubedu. The sacred culture of Balubedu still lives through the people who preserve the culture to this day. Though there is no current reigning rain queen, there is a young princess, a descendant of the rain queen lineage, awaiting to become of age to be crowned the next rain queen. Protecting the throne currently is her uncle the previous queen's brother. The story of the Mujaji Rain Queen begins in the 16th century. Unfortunately, there's no written record of how the first Rain Queen came to attain the power to control the rain, but oral history does tell of a variety of stories, all of the stories leading back to some form of incest. Some stories tell of her father, who was a Karanga king at the time. The stories tell of him being instructed by his ancestors to impregnate his daughter in order to start a lineage of female leaders. Um, because at the time it was a very male dominated space as a way of passing the power down to her um, to become the next queen. Some stories tell that it was her brother who impregnated her. Either way, she fled the village out of shame and she settled in Venda. This is where the story of her queendom begins. Those who followed her, those who surrounded her, though they were used to being ruled and led by men, they developed a great respect for the rain-making powers that she proved to have. So they conducted the rituals that then made her their queen. So in that time, the royal family begins with Rain Queen Mujaji I. Mujaji means ruler of the day. The lifestyle of Mujaji is slightly different to other queens because it's a lifestyle that not only venerates her royal status, but it also serves to protect and preserve her sacred magic, you know, the power that she has. So she has to live in complete isolation for several reasons. One of them being to protect her sacred powers from being vulnerable to any kind of energy pollution. She's not even allowed to be seen in public. Her only mode of communication with the public is through her royal council of males. Although the rain queen births several children, she's not allowed to marry ever. Her children are also not to be claimed by any man because they're said to belong to the royal house. The Rain Queen never really has male companions. She has wives and all of her wives are chosen from the families of chiefs that are in the surrounding villages and their purpose is to serve her. Our last reigning Rain Queen <laughs> was crowned at just 25 and died two years later, making her both the youngest reign queen in her lineage and also the shortest reign in the history of her lineage. The details of her death are mostly a mystery to the public. Her hospital records stated that she fell ill with meningitis and that's what killed her. But there's a lot of speculation that her lifestyle displeased the ancestors and also put a lot of stress on the royal council because she conducted herself very differently to her predecessors. She was the first rain queen to enjoy being in the public eye. She was also the first rain queen to receive a formal education. She was also the first rain queen to have a boyfriend or a partner, it feels more respectful to say a partner. She wore modern clothing and she was said to generally just enjoy Western culture. But even with all of that, she's not said to be the one that actually broke the chain of preservation of culture within the Rain Queen lineage. The Rain Queen, who was said to be the one that cursed the rest of the bloodline, was the third Rain Queen, Ketwane Mujaji III. She reigned from 1895 to 1959. The South African Prime Minister at the time, Uyan Smuts, described her as handsome and intelligent. He was said to be quite fond of her. He even built her a White House 
around the royal compound. So the way that she was said to have broken the royal custom or the chain of royal custom was when she refused to commit ritual suicide when her time came to pass her power and her gift down to the next rain queen. The custom of the rain queen was that when the time of her death nears, the queen must select her successor, which was usually, but not necessarily, the oldest of her daughters. She then commits ritual suicide by absorbing a poison. This was said to immortalize the spirit of the rain queen. So Mujaji III's refusal to do that it caused a little bit of controversy. But I also believe that the apartheid regime can't be disregarded as one of the main interruptions to the royal culture because settler administrators aimed to lump them into homogenous self-governing areas. So in 1972, the Valuberu were folded into the Leboa homeland and the Mujaji IV was officially relegated from queen to chief. So I imagine that it raises new challenges for you as a queen when the colonizers are up in your business and forcing your hand. But regardless, the fourth and the fifth reign queen were able to rule according to the strict royal custom. However, when Queen Mujaji V chose her successor, the princess died two days before her, both of them leaving only a very young princess, Princess Makubu, to take the throne, which is how the sixth reign queen then became the youngest crowned reign queen in their lineage. And then Mujaji VI, in her early death, left behind Princess Masala Nabo and Prince Lekukena. And because men are not entitled to the throne at all, the community awaits Princess Masala Nabo's coming of age to crown her the new reign queen. Princess Masala Nabo was three months old when her mother passed away. When she turns 18, she will officially be crowned Queen Mujaji VII. Mujaji's reign will be different from her three immediate predecessors because since 1972 they were only queens in name since they had been demoted to chieftain status. The former president Jacob Zuma changed things back and made the Baluberu people one of the handful of tribal monarchies officially recognized by the South African state. So when she comes of age, Mujaji will rule at the same level as the powerful Zulu and Kosa kings. Although those kings oversee much larger kingdoms, she's still going to have influence over more than a hundred villages and she'll receive a healthy paycheck from the government. Jacob Zuma and Cyril Ramaphosa traveled north for a celebration of Mujaji's restoration. I'm always skeptical of the government's involvement in things because we all know how corrupt our government is in South Africa and even especially because of the way the ANC came into power and how they actually gained their power but it is part of the knowledge system that I abide to that corruption is a part of the cycle of nature it has its place it's one of those things that can't be avoided at this point it's been this way since the colonizers settled on our land so it's something that when i look at it it looks a little bit suspect to me but you know the good news is that they're going to be crowning the next rain queen soon if we're looking at her turning 18 it means it's going to happen in 2023 or maybe 2024 i think it's going to be a very special moment in our african history so I'm really interested to see how it turns out. I'm really interested to see how it goes. I'm very excited also for the sacred moment in our history. And I hope that nothing tarnishes it. And that's, you know, my concern with government involvement. Hopefully there's going to be a working system in which the structure and the sacredity and the spirituality of things can work hand in hand for the optimum well-being of our people. I think it's going to be quite a special occurrence. I think it's going to be very interesting. I'm really excited to see how it goes please do let me know what your thoughts are on it um you know how do you what do you think about it how do you feel about it drop in the comments let me know thank you so much for watching i know i didn't elaborate too much on the general customs of the Lovedu people which are very interesting um maybe we'll you know if you would like sometime in the future we can do like a full breakdown of of Balubedu and their customs and their cultures that outside of just you know the rain queen we're just focusing on that because that is the topic and that's a very special part of their culture that i think is important for all of all of africa to acknowledge because she is the rain queen 
you know the only one that we know of or the only one that i know of if there are any more please do let me know drop it in the comments thank you so much for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe take care of yourselves guys love and life mwah, mwah, mwah.